In other words, my goal today is that you learn the main principles of participation. As long as you know the principles, you will find the best method or you develop your own method or approach if you are going into practice later in your life. And that's why I will show you in detail one method. And the method is the first one that I listed, Community Action Planning, CAP. Now, Community Action Planning is a generic concept. It's used for a range of different participatory approaches. They all have a common trait, which is centering on the community as the driving force of the planning process. And it is said that probably this is the first person uh, who uh, devised uh, this idea, the basic idea of community action planning. Listening to the community, integrating the community, centering the planning process on the community. This is a German architect, Otto Koenigsberger. He devised this very early in the late 1950s to early 1960s. And there is not a good picture of Koenigsberger, so I did my own cartoon of them, so you know more or less who he is. <laughs> now, Koenigsberger's case is a very interesting case because he does, throughout his career, he moves from one to uh, another approach. He starts like the completely um, top-down practitioner, the designer who's going to go to the third world to build a city that he will design on his own desk. And we will put it there for the people to deal with whatever he did. So he was that a central figure in the this, uh, design process. He actually began working for the Indian government in the 1940s, in 1939 actually. And by the late 1940s, he was involved in the design of a series of new towns in the newly, or new independent uh, state. And these were planned towns, just like Brasilia, remember. In fact, uh, Kennisberger could have become the planner of Chandigarh. Does it sound familiar? Chandigarh, one of those masterpieces of Le Corbusier. He was uh, apparently offered that job, but he declined, and he recommended Le Corbusier to do the, the work. Now, at some point, Kennisberger questioned the role of architects, architects who were like you and me, educated in the first world, and then would go to the third world to impose their first world visions of uh, the world. Um, so uh, he began questioning that. It said that he, 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 there was a Nigerian student he had that at some point said, listen, I have studied architecture in the UK, and I learned about snow loads and local building regulations. But this is of no use to me in Nigeria. And that made Kenneth Berger um, to think that actually the local communities should have a say, and not only that, but they should be central in the uh, planning process. He wrote in 1952, it is necessary to mobilize the people themselves for their solution. Self-help, 1952. So, Kenigsberger, an architect who is directly there within that genealogy of self-help, of which another architect is a, a very important uh, figure, John Turner, in fact, the central figure, as we um, this, uh, saw in our previous lecture. Now, community action planning. So it's a generic for these processes that involve community in the planning and design of their own housing solutions. In um, 1984, Nabil Hamdi and Reinhard Gether at MIT devised a specific, very structured and organized uh, variation of, the, of this general principle, and they call it community action planning. They initially call it micro-planning. 
but apparently there were certain confusion with the name, so they decided to go for the generic one, community action planning. This method has been adopted by the World Bank, as well by, as by some national and local governments in South Asia, South Africa, uh, Africa, and Latin America. Now the method's co-creator, Reinhard Gether, was a student of John Turner. And Gether is still a professor at MIT, and is a very respected figure in the world of self-help and participatory planning. And he was, in fact, my thesis advisor at MIT, and is still one of my academic mem mentors. So if I am one of his academic sons, I guess I am something like the academic grandson of John Turner. So in um, 2004, I worked with Reinhard Gether on a community action planning in Istepeque in El Salvador. So this map is so you have an idea of where we are. California, somewhere here. This is Central America, a tiny country, the smallest country in the continental Americas, El Salvador. And I believe it's the only Central American country that only has a coastline on the Pacific Ocean. So what was this project about? Um, so now you know what image, what that uh, initial image that I was showing about participatory design. It's about this project, a housing project for a group of families in the town of uh, San Cayetano, Istepeque. They had been squatting, you know that term very well, for as long as 25 years, some of them, can you imagine? on railroad land. Remember that we talk about marginal pioneerism when people don't have any other place to go but to the danger, dangerous places. So they were uh, settling by the railroad. And uh, the reason why they were there was that uh, some of them had been left homeless because of the civil war, a vicious civil war in the 1980s a couple of hurricanes and some, uh, an earthquake also. So they received support from an Irish NGO that uh, offered them funding for housing and for a plot of land. And the organization uh, bought land for them and contracted the housing works. So what you're going to see is the process because uh, they had the house, the model house, a model of house that it's becoming, I imagine, familiar for you. Very simple, um, gable house, very slow slopes, build, uh, is the, 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 the simple uh, possible structure, very easy to estimate the costs, very easy to build, very quick, you can build very quick, and that's what they got. So they asked for our support, our support as a, SIGOS, which is a special interest group in uh, urban settlement, of which I am a member. This is an MIT service learning group. So what they needed support uh, for was for the organization of the settlement. So they had the houses, they had the plot, they wanted to know how to accommodate 47 houses in a rather small plot. So we partner with um, two local NGOs, REDES, an NGO of, uh, that specializes in infrastructure provision. They are engineers and architects. And um, another NGO called El Balsamo, which is a women's run NGO that focuses on livelihood issues. And we also invited to the process two local architecture schools, a public one and a private one. Also, Melody Toulier from MIT was a facilitator of the workshop and did work with the children of the community. I'll explain that. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a short video of the workshop so you know uh, quickly what this is about. And then you have an idea of the whole process, and I can go into details so you don't fall asleep. So this is the beginning of the workshop. Um, in the first section, we got to know the families, and the workshop started with uh, the participants in identifying their housing priorities. You can see the height turn over there. Um, this is um, then that first uh, session. 
in which they uh, lead the their vision of what they want, quality, um, a cent an educational center, a school, and other, uh, other goals that they have for their community. This is Rafael Garay, a civil engineer from Redes. He's explaining them the plot, what the organization got on uh, CAD drawn, digitally drawn plans. Now this was a big moment in the workshop when everybody packed themselves into two trucks and I don't know how everybody fit into those two trucks but everybody was there um, uh, to go to the, to the plot because many of them had never been there. Uh, so there was a lot of excitement and here Edgardo Lezama, he's an architect, Salvadorian architect, is explaining now this is the plot and he is uh, reading the plan already in the plot. And um, in this moment I am explaining and uh, relating the plan with the objects in reality, like putting the plan there and saying, so the water tower is here, this structure is here, this tree is here, because then they were going to work with the plan, which is an abstraction, and you need, you need to know how that abstraction works. So that was the purpose of the whole exercise. And it begins already in, in our uh, meeting center with a, an initial size of, for the plot that is determined and is marked by these pieces of paper. So they start this play, this game of locating the plots, considering the, the norms, considering the code, how wide should be the streets, uh, the main and the secondary streets. And here what we are explaining them is uh, exactly that, keeping mind codes. How, what would be the distance between the water points because because of funding there wasn't going to be plumbing for every house but a number of water points, of water collection points and they are counting them later. Numero de cantareras, the name, the number of water points in uh, a fair distance so everybody uh, could access them and they wouldn't have to walk too, too, too much. And now you see the work is done and there is a space for a green area, like a little park. And these are the houses, which are stones with a, a paper roofs, stones that the kids uh, got for the workshop. Um, now again, they need always the professional there, the professional support there. They are not just on their own. They are receiving constant information about everything from how to measure using a metric scale to codes, structure, and, and costs. And by the end, we got together, they presented their proposals, and the workshop ends with uh, an election after the community decides what's the ne what are the next steps, how are they going to involve the government, for example, in the pavement, in the trash collection, then uh, they elect uh, people to take care of, of, of those tasks. Who's going to coordinate, who's going to go there and put pressure on the major, so he delivers. Now the material stays with there, with them. We only got uh, the information and they then kept the plans. And uh, what Redes did, the, the professionals NGO did, was that the community proposals, then they redrew them using CAD and then adjusted to the codes and then they proceeded to build. And I'll show you that later.